Hi Earthlings, this is Noga and welcome to Vegan Noga, a channel dedicated to talking about getting what we want. Whether it's going vegan or finding a life partner, getting fit, resolving our body image issues, anything that's progress. Are you tired of the dieting and binge eating cycle? Of eating clean for a stretch and then that overwhelming feeling of mega grossness and disappointment in yourself after a terrible binge? Worried that you've ruined your weight loss progress and finding it difficult to trust yourself to pick up starting again? Knowing that you don't need those heaps of extra food but feeling like you just can't otherwise, that feeling of no control over it, frustration, depression, distress, self-hate, jealousy of others who don't binge and wanting someone to pull you out of the sticky mud. That's what I felt for a long time until I decided that I'm sick and tired of always being sick and tired and I decided to get down to the bottom of this monster. That's what it felt like to me, like I was possessed by a demon. So how did I do it? Coming right up. At first, when I was trying to deal with it on a practical level only, it wasn't good enough. And what do I mean by practical? I thought to myself, well, if you can't control the binging, then at least control the food. So I used to binge on vegetables, but since those are too calorically low, I was hungry all the time. My thoughts revolved around food, what my next meal would be, which is kind of silly because it would have just been veggies. And I became underweight. Don't fool yourselves though, the calorie restricting and binge eating game is the same monster, who has the same parents and the same name, it's just it's different moods. Then I took a leap of faith and with the help of a plant based high raw lifestyle, I was brave enough to allow myself to eat food that wasn't just veggies again. This helped me to slowly trust myself to eat food again and since I knew I was eating healthy foods, I was more willing to eat it. But the thing is, I hadn't addressed the real underlying issue, so I still binge ate on those foods. I entered an insanely binge crazed phase which lasted a year. I could feel myself healing from the fear of eating food which is a very positive thing. But at the same time, the quantities I was eating were out of control. I couldn't recognize the true feeling of satiation and would only stop eating once I felt my stomach was about to rupture. Yes, it was only on healthy, clean foods, but I was packing myself till it was literally difficult to breathe sometimes. I most enjoyed pigging out on my own so that no one would be able to judge me and I really needed my privacy for this daily ritual. Sounds familiar? When I met John, my husband, we spoke a lot about my struggles and we slowly began to unveil the reason and cause behind my need to binge. I can share part of it with you. And why just part of it? Because we've had so many conversations over the course of a year and a half, I can't remember them all. And it's not fully structured in my mind, but what has stuck in my mind is this thought. In our society, we get raised in little kiddie camps called schools, where we slave away all day at school and then return home with a mountain of homework. At least that's how it was for me during the 90s. So when I came home, we used to have a family meal where we all took a break from that slavery. That meal was our opportunity to share our daily experiences with our family. How we felt, stuff that happened, everyone was sat and focused on the speaker. Not watching TV or working on the computer or otherwise engaged, but attentive and hearing me when I was speaking. I didn't want that meal to end because I was being listened to. I also knew that after that meal, homework. Mealtime got associated with a feeling of safety and security when my loved ones saw me and heard me. How did we usually celebrate birthdays or events? Food. So naturally, happy times revolved around food. This is all considered normal in our society, but it doesn't always make it right for everyone. I guess I developed a bond between feeling seen, heard, listened to, and food. Now I had to work on disassociating that bond, and John was a massive help. We devised a technique which we called assessing and recounting of the feelings around the food. What really helped me was having John as an accountability buddy. This can also be done with a personal diary as long as you keep your entries honest. After every single meal I put into my mouth, I would write down after I had it what I had felt beforehand, during and after. The categories I was rating were my emotions before and after, sad, scared, excited, lonely, misunderstood, frustrated my stress before and after the meal, if I was scared I wouldn't feel satiated after I finished the meal and whether this feeling changed throughout the meal as the food was being eaten, 
I would rate if I enjoyed the actual food, rate if I wanted more food. At the end of the day, we sometimes went over everything I'd eaten that day and say again how I felt overall. I had too much, too little, hungry, not hungry, what I could do better, what I did do, which was awesome, and I'd like to repeat, each day was a lesson. Another thing that helped on days in which I thought I was doing badly was counting calories. On most of those days when I counted, I could see I hadn't eaten as much as I thought and it allowed me to relax and release the anxiety. I used an online calorie counter calculator as a guide to work out my daily caloric needs, but I wasn't always necessarily hitting the exact target. Some days were less and some were more, depending on my hunger and appetite levels. I want to clarify that I wasn't calorie counting during the day. I used this only as a tool on days which I felt I was freaking out when I was feeling hungry later on in the day, but in my head I felt like I had already eaten a lot and how come nobody else feels this hungry when they eat this much? Classic mental cinema. Then I started recounting what I had eaten that day and it always turned out that I had eaten less than I thought. This allowed me to continue eating without the stress and anxiety. I agreed I wouldn't judge myself at any stage and I began by just writing this down or talking about it without trying to downsize portions of food. After I got used to it, I started working on incorporating little more veggies too because at the time I wasn't having many veggies and on making the portions smaller but eating whenever I felt hungry. Even if I wasn't really physiologically hungry and it was just the binge talking, I would eat and just assess that later on, meaning no pressure in the actual action of eating. This sort of assessment just helped me realize what I was really feeling and helped me disconnect the association of emotions I had with the act of eating. It took me over six months to be in a place where I finally felt independence of this inward food demon which used to possess me and to be consistent about assessing and recounting. Another thing I recognized is what triggers me to binge eat, which was social events around food and buffets with unlimited food so I avoided those at the beginning of the process. Today, I have my life back, my freedom. It's not going to be easy, you have to be patient and you need to want it and to make a brave decision to break this pattern and get rid of the demon and of the excuses. I don't have time because I work late. I just grab whatever I see in front of me. I'm too busy to do this. I get tempted by my kids' junk food. You're too busy? Make yourself less busy. This is important. It's your life, your health, your happiness. When you're happy, your family will be too. You just grab whatever is in front of you, why is there shit in front of you? Train your mind to understand that it's not even food. You want fries? Chop up some potatoes and oven bake them. Pizza? Use whole grain and ditch the pepperoni and cheese. You're tempted by your kids' junk? Why are they eating junk in the first place? Those are all excuses. I know because I used to make them too. No one is going to help you out here but yourself. If you think you've had enough of suffering and you're ready to help yourself, you're welcome to head over to my website and download my free worksheet which can help you with your assessing and recounting. Begin by jotting down five things about yourself which you think make you special and that you love yourself for. This list will remind you what and who it is that you're working for. Then continue to the worksheet. It will be your best friend for the next few months. Will it be scary? Yes. Will it take time? Yes. Will it be easy? No. Will it be worth it? Absolutely. fucking -lutely. Thank you to you all Earthlings who asked me to do this video. It's a hard topic to deal with and I was finding it hard to sit down and do the video, but I'm really glad I did. Thank you to all the ladies on the Emily Sky Fit Forum who gave me that nudge to do the video and to all my friends on Instagram, Facebook and Snapchat who have been eager to hear this. Love you all. Thank you for watching this video. Please like the video if you feel like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to be notified of future videos about life goals and progress, vegan made easy and plenty more. See you next time, I think. Ciao!